the Drupal Report Daily Red so far, I'm interviewing Benny Lander, founder, chairman and CEO of Lander or Lander Corp. Okay, so Benny, welcome to the Red Sofa. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I mean, how does it feel to be the most talked about man of the show this year? I am? I think so. Well, I wish my mother was here. <laughs> <laughs> but there seems to be a lot of interest in what you're doing here, so I mean, that's yeah. a good thing. Yes, yes. Yeah. Actually, I'm not, I'm not that surprised, okay. really, on, yeah. to, to tell you the truth. Yeah. yeah I, think I think we expected we would have quite an impact because uh, I think nanography is very dramatic. Mm. Okay. And, I mean, how does it feel to be back in print? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I, I really did miss being in this business. Mm. I really missed it. Okay. And was, so, it always, was your return always planned? or was it? A no, happy no, accident? no, not at all, not at all, no. Okay. Um, after HP acquired Indigo, I uh, started uh, Landa Corporation, and we, our object was to do technology research in uh, nanotechnology for energy. Okay. And uh, this energy project for energy conversion, we want to try and keep the planet from overheating, so we're working on energy conversion from heat, um, required nanostructures, very small nanostructures. Okay. And you can make nanostructures by self-assembly of atoms or by reducing big things to small particles. And so we developed a technology for reducing things to small particles, smaller than anybody's been able to do. And because of, I guess, my, my DNA in printing, uh, I, uh, I asked myself whether we could do it for pigments, and we did. We tried, it worked, and it opened up the door to entirely new properties for inks based on nano pigments. And that's when we had the idea, hey, we could really have a second revolution in the printing industry. Okay. Uh, and you mentioned HP, um, selling it to HP, or Indigo to HP. Yes. I mean, how do you think HP feels about your return to the industry? Well, I can't speak for HP, but we have a wonderful relationship. And it, you know, HP, I think, has got to be one of the, if not the, most creative, uh, technologically advanced companies in the world. And they appreciate advanced technology, and we have a mutual, I think, admiration relationship and good friends. And so I can't help but feel that they would be, if not proud, then certainly very pleased to see a new technology uh, evolving like this. Okay. So but what's good for the industry is good for everyone. I certainly, I certainly think so, and I would expect, ask them, I can't speak for HP, I expect HP sees it that way as well. Okay. Um, you've already, already unveiled a number of partnerships at the show, Yes. Um, but they're obviously all sort of life manufacturers at the moment. Yes. Are you also talking to digital vendors? Is that something of interest, digital partnerships? Uh, our interest is to see uh, nanography pervade all markets that it can touch. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, today the products that we see, the digital printing products in the commercial space, in the production space, all were born in the office whether it's dry toner xerography or liquid electrophotography or inkjet, they all started in the office and grew up, tried to raise their performance to meet production offset uh, uh, market requirements. Mm -hmm. We're starting at the opposite end. We're starting the very, very highest speed, highest quality, highest mm -hmm. performance range, but these products will go down market. Okay. And you should expect to see nanographic printing, certainly in the office, ink in the office, mm. and I wouldn't be surprised if you find it one day in the home as well. Oh, okay. So, so the answer is yes. We are, uh, our, our philosophy is different than it was my first time around. Sure. I, when I started, I wanted to do everything myself. Uh, now my, the philosophy is quite opposite. We have seen monopolies and what monopolies can and cannot do. Um, Xerox is the best example. It had a monopoly from the launch of its famous 914 copier in 1959 to 1974. And Xerox was alone with xerography because they had very strong patents. Well, we too have very strong patents. But what happened was when others came in, Canon, Ricoh, Mita, Minolta, Kodak, when everybody else embraced the same technology, mm -hmm. then the market exploded. And everybody did well, the market did well, the customers did well. And you know who did the, the, the most well? Xerox. Xerox. <laughs> so uh, rather than waiting 15 years, we could have a monopoly. We will, we will have very strong patents and it's unique technology. But we believe that A, customers want a choice, customers need a choice. In this industry, customers are so loyal to their vendors that if they have the opportunity to buy a new technology from the vendor they already know and trust, the probability of them making that decision, yes, I'm ready, I have the confidence to do it, 
They need two elements to do that. One, to know that they're making the right technology choice. And by having industry-wide adoption of one technology, I think that convinces the customer, yes, everybody's doing it. We can feel safe doing it as well. And the second is, I want to get it from the partner, from the vendor I've been working with for decades, the one I most trust. And hopefully, uh, most of those choices will be partners of ours for nanography. Oh, okay. So yes, in the commercial space and other. Yeah, OK. But it's an inter if, if my understanding is correct, the model works that you'll license the technology, but the consumables you will still manufacture and supply. That's correct. But how does that fit in with, say, digital vendors' models in that you know, the biggest margin tends to be on consumables? Do you think? Well, we're sharing the opportunity with our partners and we're sharing, of course, the consumables margins with our partners. Okay. Uh, this also for our partners gives them for the first time the opportunity to benefit not just from presses, but from pages. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, the, the business is $600 billion in pages and only a few billion dollars in presses. So it's a big opportunity for them. And yes, we're sharing it with them. But we will, we will also be in the market with our own branded products. Sure. The products will either be our own branded or co-branded with our partners. Mm -hmm. And the LOIs that we're taking from customers here, uh, we enable the customers to take a place in line, to reserve a place in line. And whether it'll be branded by Landa or co-branded Landa, some other company, no matter what, it's Landa inside. And I think the customers will be happy having a choice. You mentioned the letters of intent that you're signing with customers yes. at the moment. How long is your waiting list now? Oh, it isn't, it's only day two of the show, <laughs> yeah. and we've signed several dozen. Okay. And we have, I think, hundreds already who are in process. Uh, because the letters of intent require a deposit, yeah. because we need to know that the customers are serious, yeah. uh, most don't sign the deposit uh, immediately. They consult with their whomever. But some have already transferred the funds. I mean, on the first day, it was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So the reaction has been fantastic, and we expect to have many hundreds. Okay, fantastic. Um, and the final question is, I think, um, back in the day, if you like, you said that, I think, if I quote you correctly, you said everything that can be digital will be. Do you think that's now changed to basically anything that can be printed will be printed digitally? Uh, anything that can be printed will be printed As in digitally. anything, you know, what you're doing now is commercial rather than just variable data. Yeah. The application well, is changing. Uh, listen, it's a process. Yeah. As I, uh, I've said uh, in our presentations, there's nothing that's going to challenge offset printing for long runs for a very long time. Uh -huh. Because it is such a mature and efficient process. If you're doing millions or hundreds of thousands, or even many tens of thousands, it'll be a long time for any digital process challenges that. Mm -hmm. But now, in the under 10,000 range, that will probably in a very short time become the all digital domain, and digital over time will progressively creep up higher and higher, mm -hmm. and so uh, maybe eventually. But eventually, except for packaging, commercial printing will be replaced by digital media, but that eventually is many, many decades away. Yeah. So for most customers, for, for everybody, many, many decades is far beyond the horizon and who knows. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be gone by then. So that's yeah, right. That's it's fine. A, <laughs> what's really of interest is to, to most customers, how can I prosper as the industry transitions from mechanical printing through digital printing to ultimately digital media? But how can I prosper in this period? Mm. And so for most, they thought the answer was, oh, I have to become a digital print shop. But for them, for most customers, becoming a digital print shop means they have to find new customers, new jobs, new applications, a huge marketing and business development challenge. Mm -hmm. What Landa Nanographic, Nanographic, Nanographic Graphic Printing gives them is the ability to take the jobs they've already got but they can't do profitably, mm -hmm. which is conventional print jobs, but their, uh, their customers are pushing them to shorter and shorter runs. Mm -hmm. Digital today can't make that profitable. We make it profitable up to thousands of B1 sheets, which is a lot uh, mm. compared to where we are today. Okay. So it fills in that huge gap uh, in the industry. But, and obviously the products you're showing are going to show our technology demonstrations, if you like. When do you think you'll have your first commercial sellable product and when will you start shipping units? Well, we're showing six products, mm -hmm. each demonstrating, yes, a new technology. Mm. And we're the first to say the technology isn't ready for prime time. Sure. Uh, these products are not ready to be shipped. Anybody who has a close look at our prints, I think will be impressed, but we'll also see some defects. Mm -hmm. uh, there are issues here and there, but that's natural in the evolution and the development of any technology. Mm -hmm. But in this business, 
You're not in commercial printing if you don't have the highest of offset quality, the highest of uh, offset speed and reliability. And so to ensure that we do that, we want to absolutely be certain that the presses we ship are fully matured and developed, which we're going to do this time in our own premises, not on the customer shop. Sure. So that'll be at least under 18 months uh, before you see machines in customer sites. Gotcha. But when they are there, they will be great. Fantastic. Brilliant. Well, thank and, you very much. But I have to say, I, I end each show uh, our, of our presentation saying to the customers, I hope you leave this show saying to yourself, I've seen the future and it's worth waiting for. <laughs> so I think the customers feel, yes, this is worth waiting for. Yeah. Actually, that's interesting. Do you think that'll impact on the digital market and that people who are looking to make an investment now maybe will say, actually, I want to hold off for two years before taking that big leap into digital? Do you think that's going to be a negative impact on the digital market as a whole? Well, no, I don't think it'll have a negative impact either on digital or on the offset market for two reasons. Uh, those who need digital need it now mm. because they're growing businesses rapidly, immediately, and they need to buy presses now. So mm. they aren't the ones who are going to be holding on for the off in the next couple of years mm. to have a press. And those who are in offset, I think it does the opposite. I think the fact that their vendors are now embracing land and anography for the next generation of presses tells them, mm. hey, I can with confidence buy an offset press now from the same vendor in whose hands I'm going to be as he takes me into the digital era. Okay. And so I think, hopefully, because this industry has seen a very serious decline mm. in capital equipment purchase in the past mm. five years, mm. hopefully this will give the customers the confidence that they've been needing, they haven't had over the past few years. They've been afraid to buy, afraid that, hey, if I buy an offset press today, tomorrow somebody's going to come with a digital offering that will make it obsolete. Mm. Now I hope they feel that they're in the hands or somebody they can trust to take them all the way, and they can make their offset purchase now knowing that it'll be complementary, not competitive with the digital offerings that the same vendor uh, will be offering them in the future. Yeah, okay. Fantastic, well, thank so you very much So I think much it's for good time. for the industry, and I yeah. certainly hope so. Great, well, it was a pleasure to meet you, and thanks pleasure for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you so much. Pleasure, thank you.